Cruise lines continue to make changes in order to raise their bottom line. Carnival cancels multiple sailings. There's a rescue at sea, and two more people go overboard this week. Ahoy, travelers! It's Amy with Cruising from the Ozarks here with your cruise news roundup for the week of December 17th, 2022. Maybe it's because we're getting close to the end of the year, but there seems to be a lot of big stories this week. First off, the most tragic story of the week involved two separate cases of women going overboard, one on a P&O ship near Australia and the other on an MSC ship off the coast of Florida. On the 13th, a 23-year-old woman fell overboard the Pacific Explorer P&O ship just before midnight. Despite the ship immediately beginning rescue operations, the woman's body wasn't located until just before 7 a.m. the next morning. A 36-year-old woman died after going overboard the MSC Meraviglia on Thursday. According to passengers, the woman went overboard around 5 in the morning off the coast of Florida and was located a few hours later. As in most cases, neither of these instances had a happy ending, which is really what made the Thanksgiving miracle such a unique outcome. Now, my heart goes out to the family members of these women. I can't imagine the tragedy and especially those that were actually on the cruise with her. These ships, they do, they support the families in this time and until they can get off ship and get to services. But, you know, what a tragedy you're you think you're on this great you know once in a lifetime for many people trip and then this tragedy strikes lately it seems that every few days we are hearing about cruise lines that are raising costs in some way or cutting services in another and now we even have information about workers being laid off you know many people who've never cruised before they envision cruising as a luxury vacation option that's not available to the average American or average vacationer. Yet those within the cruising community, we've we've long known that cruising can be an affordable vacation option. Cruising can be cheaper than land-based or a really luxurious vacation. It really depends on what you choose, the lines you choose, the options you choose within those lines. However, if these cruise lines continue the way that they have been going, the days of cruising being cheaper than land-based vacations may actually be over. Before we get into the specifics of what changes are being made to bolster the bottom line of some of these cruise lines, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button It's not going to cost you a thing. It helps other cruisers know that our channel has content worth viewing, pushes them out to people who like cruising content. And make sure to also click that notification bell so that you don't miss any future posts. According to an SEC filing, Norwegian Cruise Line has reduced the size of their shoreside employee base by 9%. Now, imagine getting that news right before Christmas. In their statement, NCL said they, quote, carried out a workforce reduction and right-sizing to better align the company's workforce with its strategic priorities and prepare for its future growth, end quote, which is a pretty fancy way of saying they fired around 300 people and right before Christmas. You know, this comes right on the heels of Norwegian raising gratuities by around 20% and even limiting crew access to guest areas on the ship. Some crew um, higher up, they've had access to various amenities on the ship that are now being taken away. And none of this really bodes well for the future. They may be making money, but at some point, nickel and diming everybody to death getting rid of um, perks, firing people, and removing perks for crew just isn't a great look. Royal Caribbean goes to a one turndown a day as a test run on at least one ship 
And we all know how often these tests become a standard procedure. Now, personally, I don't understand why people need their cabin clean twice a day. It seems super bougie to me. There are people been out of shape about having to make their own bed after an app after an afternoon nap. And I just wonder how many of these same people even make their beds every single morning. Honestly, I just don't get it. I think it's great that they come in, they pick up your room, make sure you've got new towels and fresh towels, turn your bed down if it's at night. But why you need that to happen twice a day is just really beyond me. People say it's because, well, if I come into my room, like I work from the ship, a lot of people do that nowadays with remote work. They can actually be on a ship and still work that they come in, they maybe they bring some food with them or get some room service and they take a nap, whatever, and they like having their room all clean and fresh and the bed turned down before they go to bed at night. But honestly, like nobody's doing that at your house. So I just don't see this as a really a big issue to me. I mean, once a day seems plenty to me. Royal has also shut down Diamond Plus members access to the concierge lounge. Now, I've never even been on Royal, let alone have any status, but apparently there are just too many qualifying for this perk, and most likely this surge in numbers is partly due to uh, Royal giving out double points to cruisers you know, for a short time there after cruising resumed post shutdown. So a lot of people really jumped their points up pretty quickly and was able to get into these higher levels. The loss of perks and standard services is just one more example of how cruising is changing and we're seeing it all the time. Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas had its floating out ceremony this week, which is a major moment in any shipbuilding process. This is the first time a new ship touches water. Are you one of those who has already booked on this new massive resort style ship? Now the biggest ship I've been on so far is the Carnival Dream, which to be honest is just a medium sized ship at best. I love it. Carnival Dream so far has been my favorite ship. I personally think for a first time cruiser, it's the perfect size. It's not too small. It's not too big. It's not so overwhelming as some of these huge XL class and bigger ships. And it really does still have everything on it, at least in my opinion. Now, our next three sailings are all on bigger and bigger ships, but none of them compare to Royal Caribbean's huge ships. And personally, I'm not sure that I would even enjoy these mega ships, but many people out there do. Are you one of them? Drop a comment below and let me know what is the biggest ship you've been on so far. Royal Caribbean and Carnival both opened 2024-25 Caribbean cruises for booking this week. Carnival is now planning to sail from Norfolk, Virginia year-round to the Caribbean. You could book a six or eight day cruise on the Carnival Sunshine, which plans to begin sailing from the port in Norfolk on February 18, 2025. Carnival announced multiple cancellations on future sailings this week. The Vista will go into dry dock in early 2024, canceling several weeks of cruises. Now, luckily, these are cruises that are pretty far out, so they weren't affecting a lot of people. And guests will be able to rebook with price protection at a later date. They can book on a different ship or even get a full refund. It's not been announced exactly what Carnival has planned for the Vista during its dry dock, but many people do suspect the propulsion system is going to go through an overhaul. There's been some issues. The Vista entered service in 2016 and was last dry docked in July of 2019. And this comes on the heels of the announcement that the Jubilee, Carnival's next XL class ship, which hasn't even had its floating out ceremony, has had to cancel several of its sailings, including its transatlantic and inaugural sailings due to supply chain issues delaying completion. Now, we are booked on both of these ships, but so far are unaffected. 
the Vista is canceling early on uh, 24 and we're actually sailing fall of 23. So we missed that one, thankfully. And we're going to be on the Jubilee at the end of January of 2024. So I'm really hoping there won't be any more delays or it might actually affect us. There were two reasons why we chose not to book the inaugural sailing. And one is we just don't want to be on an inaugural sailing or any of those in the first few weeks. I want to let the crew start learning how to work together and mesh together and get used to the new ship and everything, you know, all those kinks are worked out before I get on it. So that's number one. And two, I was honestly afraid there would be a very good chance that the ship's launch could be delayed due to the supply chain issue. We've seen it for the last couple of years now. And it was. One of our home ports is Galveston, and it's looking at expanding and adding a fourth cruise terminal, you know, in the future. Right now, Carnival and Royal Caribbean both regularly sail out of Galveston. And Royal just recently opened their new $125 million energy efficient terminal there. Norwegian is planning to begin home porting the Prima, their newest ship, in Galveston in 23. Now, while this fourth terminal isn't going to be built in the next couple of years, MSC has shown interest in operating out of out of Galveston as it continues to expand operations in the U.S. We're going to end our week with a positive story. Thursday, December 15th, Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas rescued 22 refugees that were spotted on an overcrowded boat in the waters north of Cuba. The refugees were seen waving their arms, indicating distress, and it's been reported that the small boat was taking on water and sinking. The refugees were brought aboard ship and given food and water prior to being handed over to the U.S. Coast Guard. They may not have reached their destination, but it looks like without the assistance of the symphony, lives would have been lost. I think it's amazing how ocean-going vessels work together whenever there's any sign of distress out in open waters. I think it's something unique to the industry. And that wraps up this week's news, but don't forget to come back Tuesday for the newest in cruise tips and trivia. Meanwhile, I hope you have a blessed week.